So I don't want to berate this point any further, but I do want to briefly remind you exactly how the logit model is being estimated. And so just briefly, in the general case of when we want to estimate a model in which there's only one covariate, remember, we're essentially doing a linear transformation of this fitted regression model into the predicted probabilities, right, of the probability of having CHD over the probability of not having CHD. So we're actually creating or understanding this outcome with regards to the odds, right, of having or not having this disease. Now, when we want to actually get the predicted probabilities, right, of having CHD given some value of our covariate, this means that we're gonna transform the predicted or sorry, the estimated coefficients such as this, where in our numerator, we're taking the exponentiated uh, addition of the intercept plus the estimated beta times whatever that x value is over one plus, again, that exponentiated uh, fitted regression. Now, this means that if beta 1 is positive, we get an S shape that goes to 1 as x goes to infinity and goes to 0, right, as x goes to negative infinity. And that kind of makes sense, right? So again, think about it this way. As we increase our age, right, so the S shape goes to 1, right, as we increase our age, right? The predicted probability of having CHD continues to go higher toward one as age increases, and it goes down toward zero as we decrease in age, right? Now, the opposite would be true if beta is negative. So we could imagine a case in which we're not talking maybe about CHD or it can be CHD. So we can think about maybe exercising as our covariate. So I exercise zero hours a week, or I can exercise, I don't know, maybe like up to 40. I mean, that would be a lot of exercising, but you can imagine, right, having heart disease would decrease as a function of my increased exercise. So when we're actually going to look at the intercept and try to interpret, what that means, remember, we're thinking about when x equals zero, so when a subject has an age of zero, then the estimated probability of them having coronary heart disease over the probability of them not having coronary heart disease is equal to that beta intercept, which is negative 0.53. Now, this doesn't really make much sense for a number of reasons, right? Like the, but the estimated intercept here is the estimated log odds that just like a randomly selected baby essentially with age zero has CHD. Now, like I said, this doesn't really make too much sense. Now, the reason that this doesn't make too much sense is because that isn't actually the raw value that we need to be looking at, right? In order to interpret this, we need to take the exponentiated value of negative point or five negative five point three. So when we take that, we actually get zero point zero zero five. Now this again, like I said, is the estimated odds. Now see, it is not no longer the estimated log odds. So this is one thing that I highly highly recommend when you're performing logistic regression is that these uh, estimated coefficients aren't immediately interpretable, right? It's hard to understand what a change in estimated log odds is. Now, once we actually take and exponentiate this estimated coefficient, this makes a little bit more sense, right? So this is a 0. 005 increase in the estimated odds that like a randomly selected patient has CHD. So if we're trying to actually figure out what is the estimated probability that a patient at age zero has CHD, well, again, that is equal to the probability that y equals one when x equals zero, 
and we can actually calculate this, right? So now that we know what the exponentiated value of that beta naught is, we can construct this formula down here. Now, moving on, let's think about how we would actually interpret this beta one then. So consider the log odds of having CHD for an age group, let's just say X. Now we are going to think about it just in the same way that we did when we were talking about OLS, right? So a one unit increase is equivalent to an increase of whatever that value is, right, for the estimated beta coefficient in the log odds ratio of having CHD, right? So when we construct that, again, we're thinking about the change of going from x to x plus 1 in the log odds of having CHD. And so we can re-express it like this. So again, when we think of how to interpret this beta 1, a one unit increase in x is equivalent to that beta one increase in the log odds of having CHD. So essentially what we're doing, right, is we're just comparing two groups, one unit increase in x apart in the difference of their propensity of having CHD. So in other words, when we exponentiate that beta one, that is the estimated odds ratio, not the log odds, the odds ratio of comparing those two groups. So if we are to interpret that, what we end up getting when we actually exponentiate 0.11, we get 1.12. So what we can say then is that a one unit increase in X increases the odds, again, not log odds, odds of CHD by a multiplicative factor of 1.12. So it's increasing the odds by about 12%, right? So anything above one, if it was like 1.05, that would be an increase in 5% of the odds of having CHD given a one unit increase in age in this instance.